How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to introduce or rediscuss Enter AS Option B, which is going to be the VPN before EBGB pairing between the ASBRs. So let's go ahead and dive into what's actually going to be happening with this particular design. So we've already discussed in a fair amount of detail, done a lot of labs on option A. So we've done the back-to-back -back VRF thing. Well, remember that the back-to-back -back VRF variation of it has a labeled path from here to here. So this whole connection setup here is labeled. The connection between here and here is IP. And then the connection between CSR6 and CSR8 is labeled. Well, that's all well and great, but what if we need to extend or add labeling to this design? Is there a way to do that? And the answer is yes, we can do labeling here. So we can have labels, but this is going to transition us from option A or back to back VRFs on the ASBRs to option B which is going to be a VPN V4 slash V6 EBGP peering between the AS BRs. So this will allow us to do both IPv4 and IPv6 connectivity along the connections. And so what will end up happening is the subinterfaces. So the on the ASBR sub-interfaces, they will be shut down. And then what we will do is go in and take a look at how that's going to affect the connectivity. So what will end up happening is initially when we go to configure this, we're going to actually have to remove the VRFs from CSR5. So the reason why we do that is because there's one of three ways that we can get the connectivity to work. So the first way is what ends up happening when, for example, let's go ahead and clear the screen off and let me get out of the way. What's going to happen is CSR1, let me switch to a slightly bigger pen tip. When CSR1 and CSR2 form a uh, peer with, CS, uh, with the route reflector. The route reflector is going to peer with R5 and XR11. Same thing here. All this stuff is going to be peered to here. So that's all the connectivity control plane wise. And right now we have control plane connectivity between the ASBRs. So all that's working out well. Well, when we remove the VRF configurations on the interfaces, or at least shut them down, what will end up happening is if you take this back to a base config with no configuration on the ASBR, so we're going to actually remove the VRFs on the ASBRs. Now, why do we do that? Well, we don't want the ASBRs to actually receive any routes uh, that we don't want them to receive. So, if there's three ways that we can make this happen, the first way is the most common way, which is doing the route target filter command, is disabling that. And which, if when it's disabled, it will allow CSR5 to receive route targets regardless of what they are. It's going to say, you know what, I don't care. Let me go ahead and just receive them. The other way is to go in and have the ASBR as a route reflector. So that regardless of what the route reflector sends it, it's going to receive the routes and know what to do with it. So right now, this guy right here, he's a client, this guy's a client, this guy's a client, and this guy's a client. Well, if we go into CSR5 and XR11, and we make the connection to route reflector one here, a client and a client of these guys, right here, that means that when route reflector 1 receives a route, he's going to propagate it to CSR5. When CSR5 receives a route, he's going to propagate that down to route reflector 1. 
So because he will make, he'll be a rot reflector, regardless of what happens, he'll receive the updates. So because he's a client already, he's going to receive updates, but because the fact that he's a client, he won't be able to do anything with them because there won't be a place to put the routes. Route reflectors out of the, out of, uh, out of the gate automatically will install any of the routes learned, regardless of what they are. They don't, they're like, I don't care, just send it to me. Where if the router is not a route reflector, he's going to drop it in the event that either the VRF is not created locally or you've turned the route target filter off and you receive the routes that way. So there's that. And then the third option is going to be the local VRF. Now the idea here is if the VRF is not there, so it's if it's not there, no routes. If it is there, which it is currently, so currently, you're going to get routes. So technically speaking, I could say, you know what, let's just go through the motions and pretend like I could turn the address family off and turn the address family back on to demonstrate it. That would be one solution. Uh, or I just go in and take the config and remove it. And then I, I don't want to, if uh, if I remove the VRF uh, completely, so type in no VRF definition C1, for example, that's going to remove the VRF from the interface as well. But if I just turn the address family off, that'll keep the VRF configured globally. I just won't have a place, an address family, to place the routes into. So that's probably what I'm going to do because I do want to circle back and test option A and option B or option D. So those are, uh, that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't actually get rid of the VRF. But because of the fact that I have the VRF created, technically we already have a third variation already ready to go. So I wouldn't need to do anything. We would need to test out option two and then option one underneath, or variation one and variation two underneath, or during the config. Now that's just, that's just the ASBR, okay? Now there's other things that would need to be uh, considered as well. On here, on the routers, on the ASBR, what will end up happening is, well, since we're going to be doing VPNv4 and VPNv6 between these two connections, what's going to end up happening is you will see a labeling that comes into play where you'll have to uh, get an LDP label that comes into play to get traffic from CSR5 to CSR6. So you'll have a one label stack or I'm sorry, you'll have a label stack between the ingress PE and the egress ASBR. You'll have a label stack between, or I should say a label, between the egress ASBR and the ingress ASBR. And then you'll have a label stack from the ingress ASBR to the egress PE router. So that means you're gonna have one, two, three label switch paths which will end to end give you connectivity. So every hop, there should be a label of some level to it. You know, whether it's one or two will depend on where it's actually at in the process. But that also leads into a number of other things. When traffic comes in for a route, so let's say CSR6 advertises traffic to CSR5, regardless of which VRF it's in. What's gonna end up happening is when this information comes across the wire, this is going to be an eBGP connection, right? So the prefixes come in, CSR5 receives them, and then he's going to propagate them down to route, route reflector 1. Route reflector 1 will then propagate them to CSR1 and CSR2, respectively. However, there won't be reachability. And you might say, well, why not? Well, the reason why there won't be reachability is because the next hop information that CSR1 is going to get for the routes that CSR5 has learned and propagated to route reflector one are going to have the address of CSR six and not a address of CSR five. In other words, we'll have to tell, it's either one of two things. We'll have to go on to CSR five and issue the next hop self command, or 
we'll have to go into the local IGP, which in this case here is OSPF here and ISIS over here. And we'll have to advertise this particular prefix into OSPF. In other words, we'll have to enable OSPF and ISIS on this link in order for the 12.5.6 network to get advertised into the local IGP so that CSR1 will know how to reach it. We'll take a look at how that comes into play as well just to see what that looks like. Now that gets you propagation and updates the next hop. So now these routes will be installed. Or, or will they? They actually won't. And the reason why is because now instead of the ASBR being a termination point where you have uh, an autonomous system number here, or I'm sorry, this is two. An AS1, what you'll end up having is another BGP peering set up between these two. So in this case, when you have this BGP peering set up, the information that AS2 advertises to AS1 will be maintained. It won't be stripped off like it was in option A and sent over to the other ASBR to be received, it'll be stripped off. No, I'm sorry, it'll be maintained in option B. Option B now brings into play another variation that becomes a, uh, a trouble for people that have not really dove into the details here. Where what will end up happening is when you go on here and you propagate a route to this route reflector and then this route reflector sends a route up to, to this guy. The EBGP peer goes across, assuming that we've done next top self or we've done IGP adding. The route gets propagated down to route reflector CSR1, but CSR1 is going to drop it. And you might say, well, why would it drop it? If we got all the way there, it should just receive it. It won't. And the reason has to do with route target values. Because remember, when CSR8 sends the route target or sends the prefix outbound, it's marking it with a route target value of two, or de well, depending on what you're talking about, I'll say 2.0.8 uh, uh, colon 1 for, or I'm sorry, that would be, yeah, uh, colon 1 for customer 1. So CSR1 would receive that prefix and that route target value and drop it. Now, there are, uh, there's a, I've played around with a couple different ways of solving this. I've taken the ASBR options, you know, doing the, the no route target filter command and then also configuring this as, an, as a route reflector, those are BGP specific uh, ish things that come into play where that's, that'll bring it into the BGP table, okay? But that won't allow the traffic to go from BGP into the VRF. So regardless of what you do, you have to go on underneath the VRF and you have to type, type in an import of whatever the remote AS, uh, remote autonomous systems ingress PE route target value is. In this case here, this would be 2000 or 2.0.2.0.0.8 colon one for customer one. So we'd have to import 2.0.0.8 colon one in on CSR one. And we'd have to do that on uh, for, you know, colon two and colon three respectively for each customer. And then we have to do the same thing on uh, this guy over here and the same thing would happen here and here so it's one of those things where unless you dove into it and you understand the logic that could become a major uh, major detriment to the setup now one thing that i haven't talked about yet is the ios xr use case where by default this particular prefix in here is going to be a slash 24. all right so we have 12.11.12.0 slash 24. When we form the BGP peering between these two guys, that'll work just fine and will we'll work. However, the problem with that though is that in order for this connection here to work, we have to enable LDP on this link. So if we don't enable LDP on the link, you won't have a label because you're not actually doing a BGP VPN V4 label here. It's actually LDP. You're just forming the peering between these two. Okay. It's only when you get into option C and you're doing that, will that come into play. Option C will, uh, when you do the IPB4 plus label in option C, there's a BGP label 
that's generated between these two. But that's a whole different situation completely. So we'll talk about that in, in option C. But in option B, what we have to do on XR, and we'll have to do this for option C as well, just calling it out now, is on XR underneath the VRF, or I'm sorry, in the global table, we'll have to create a static route to the next hop. So in this case here, if we're on XR11, we'll create a static route to 12.11.12.12 going out gig 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 2. So it'll be a connected static route. You're not routing to a next top IP. You're saying, okay, for any traffic that's leaving to go out towards dot 12, going out gig 0, 0, 0, 002, I need you to be a static address. So I need to generate a slash 32 host address into the, that's why you would make that a slash 32. So that what end up happening is because it's a static route, LDP is automatically going to allocate a label for that. And once LDP allocates the label, then we'll be able to generate the label into LDP and then the end-to-end -end traffic engineering or end-to-end -end connectivity should be in play. So that's one of those things that comes into play that's a little tricky sometimes. Those are the, the things that come into play with how all this stuff plays out. So what I'm going to go do in the next video is we're going to start going through these paces in order to get all this stuff up, up and running and working. It's not terribly difficult as you'll see in some follow-on videos, but it's one of those things where when you start diving into it, then you'll have to take into consideration what's going on. So uh, in between this video and the next, I will go ahead and take down the address family config and we'll get that ready to go so that when we get to the config for um, option B and we start playing around with the VRF variation and so on and so forth, you'll see what I mean. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.